Praise God. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. I'm not going to be lifty tonight. All right. I tonight um, want to share the word of God and trust that it will bless you. And then bring us to a place of prayer around the altars. Throughout this month, I've been looking at um, just the Lord sanctifying us and spending more time in prayer. Pray that that can be something we can do in our life. Really, when we spend time at the altars in prayer, I know this is important here because when we set time aside for God, it's easy to come. And even as we hear other people pray, man, I appreciated our visitor this morning. I heard so many amens. I was like, wow, that's great. <laughs> you know, when you hear folks getting in and uh, it encourages, encourages us. I'm going to be focusing upon a very familiar passage of Scripture. I'm going to be focusing on, upon the woman with the issue of blood. However, I'm going to be looking through what's happening and transpiring prior to and uh, exceeding past the experience of the woman with the issue of blood. So if you would turn with me to Mark chapter number 5. I want to start reading verse number 20, 21. I know that you've probably heard this preached on before. I've preached on this before. However, there are some new things that have just uh, been real to me when I've read this. The Lord's ministered to me. I want to pass that along to you this evening if the Holy Ghost will help us. And I, I do believe God is the healer. And I, I'm just rejoicing over Elaine tonight. I mean, really. I'm, her presence being here, seeing what God's done, it's encouraging to me. Uh, and hearing the word of Bill Lance and what God has done for him, I'm just, I'm just amazed uh, what God's done. Sister Dottie gave me a grandson, Tristan, as well, to pray for. Let's remember him in prayer. I had surgery, some cellulitis removed. I failed to mention that. And then, let's pray for Tristan, a 17-year-old boy. I believe God's able to heal. Uh, just, uh, Sister Rachel, your testimony of God touching your body. Uh, last week and Sunday morning, what God's done, I see the, the power of God. It's a blessing. The Word of God says, And when Jesus was passed over again by the ship unto to the other side, much people gathered unto him, uh, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. There's many, uh, uh, each synagogue had several rulers. And the Bible says, and when Jesus saw him, or, and, and when he saw him, speaking of Jairus and Jesus, he fell at his feet. Let's stop here for a moment. Do you know that even in our very posture, it is worship to God? As Jairus comes and he's seeking, Brother Justin, that God would heal his daughter, there's also a symbolism of worship that is shown as Jairus comes and he falls at the feet of Jesus, Brother Doug, because he's worshiping God. Let that be a, a testimony to us from the Word of God that even our posture, raising our hands, even when we come to God and falling before Him, whether it's our bended knee or whether it's that we are just laid out uh, on the floor in such a humble position before God, that it is a form of worship tonight, even our posture. Uh, the Bible goes on down saying, Beside him greatly, he's, he's, he's pleading with him passionately, uh, Jesus, uh, 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 my, my little girl lies at the point of death. Most scholars would say probably about this time is where the girl died. Wow. I just have to tell you that as a father, for me that is unfathomable to even imagine. I wouldn't even allow my mind to go there to imagine it. Uh, so here he is. And the Bible says, I pray that you come and you lay your hand on her that she may be healed and that she may live. Actually, in the very Greek, if you understand this, it, 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 it's saying that she may be saved from death. Come and lay your hand on her that she may be saved from death. Do you know the hand of God still delivers from death today? Amen. Whether it's physical death or spiritual death, I believe that there should be some passionate pleading as we find ourselves in the correct posture before the, 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 the Son of God, the throne of God, asking God to touch that death would be gone. 
The Bible says, and when Jesus went with him, he's on his way, that much people followed him and thronged him. The Bible says that a certain woman, we're just going to, because tradition gives her this name, we're going to call her Veronica tonight. This is something I've done. It's what tradition calls her. The Bible says that she had an issue of blood 12 years. She had a disease that was related to her gender, her being a, a woman, that there was a, a, just a, a constant hemorrhage that, that was lasting for a very long period of time. Uh, that's important for you to know because I'm going to reference some other things later that will help you understand her condition. The Bible says that she had suffered many things of many physicians. Think about what the Bible says. She had suffered many things of many physicians. There were some physicians that was out to gain a, a financial gain from her, knowing that they could not help her. There are some that had done procedures and had done things to her that, 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 that had left her with pain and discomfort, but not better, with the best intention and the best knowledge in mind, but still did not help her or work for her. So as she's in this position where uh, she suffered many things of many physicians, she hasn't just sought out one doctor, but she had sought out many. She's looking for answers. She wants to live. She wants to survive. She wants to work. Uh, this infirmity that's in her body, uh, but to no means she doesn't uh, find any relief from anyone who she seeks out. The Bible says that she had spent all that she had. Imagine what would it be like uh, to spend everything that you have. You go out on a limb and you take that, if you would, that leap of faith or if you want to refer to it even as a risk, however it is, uh, just trusting. And I believe for her we could even say it's a risk because uh, we'll find later that she knows Jesus as her Savior, but she is looking for an answer for healing, but she's simply not finding it and she's out of resources. It's like saying, I don't have any insurance, I don't have any money, and, and you want some answers. And, 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 and it's intimidating because you don't have any provide for resources that you want, but you want to feel better. And it's not that you've, done, you've not tried because you've done everything. The Bible says that she was nothing better. In fact, her situation grew worse. That had to be a terrible feeling. The Bible says in what she heard of Jesus. The Greek actually says the Jesus. Thou shalt cause name Jesus, for he shall save their people from their sins. He is the Savior. He is God. He is the Jesus. Not just any God, but he is the God. The Bible says that, 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 that here he is distinguished from all others, that she came in uh, the, the press behind him. The people were great. The Bible says that she touched his garment probably referring to a blue shawl that he wore. You know how we see pictures of Jesus and he has the white robe on and then there's the blue shawl over top of that. It was probably actually the shawl. Most scholars think that it's a fringe of the blue that that that, that, that uh, 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 the Jews uh, uh, required to wear uh, that, that reminded the people of God. She reached out and she touched that, 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 that shawl. Well, let me stop. We're going to come back to reading here in a few minutes, but let's look at a few things. Imagine she's sick 12 years. That's really a long time. Over a decade, she's been sick and she's been growing worse. And so she spends great sums on doctors. She's, she's becoming more ill. She's becoming, uh, 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 her symptoms are getting worse. It's affecting everything about her. She doesn't have the energy to be able to do the things around home that she once did. She, uh, whatever situation, as a mother, a sister, a daughter, a friend, a, 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 a person in the community, she's not able to even keep up with the responsibilities of life because uh, she, she doesn't have uh, uh, the energy, the strength. She's growing worse. But the very first thing that I realize about this woman is that she was cognizant about Christ. She became aware of Christ when she heard. 
the very beginning of her blessing came when she heard about Jesus. Tell the story of Jesus. The cognizance. What the world really needs to hear is about Jesus. What we really need to hear is about Jesus. As believers, we need our focus to be cognizant upon Jesus. And as a believer, when we go out to this world, what the world really needs to hear in the middle of their problems becoming increasingly worse or their situations, they need some folks that's going to tell them about Jesus. Let me tell you, the local news isn't going to be telling them about Jesus. Let me tell you, going to school probably is not going to be telling you about Jesus because we have to become so tolerant in our society. They're not hearing about Jesus. But there's a responsibility that is placed upon every one of us to see to tell the world about Jesus. If they never hear about Jesus, there'll never be a cognizance that He is the one who is the God. He is the Savior. He is the, the healer. He is the deliverer. I, I need to hear about Him. I, it's a message that is a life-saving message. I don't know who it was, a family member, or a friend, a someone running through the streets talking about Jesus, but the news came to this world that Jesus was passing by. Oh, God help us tonight that we would become so excited about Jesus that we would share it. Amen. Because many need to hear physically, spiritually, emotionally. But they need to hear about Jesus. Second thing that I noticed about her, not only did she hear about Jesus, but there was a coming to Christ. The Bible says that she came in the press behind. See, there was a difficulty for her to get to Christ. It wasn't like people just got out of her way saying, oh, she needs Jesus more than anyone else. No, the people weren't thinking that. There was a press of people, and he had passed by. And she came in the press behind. And as she begins to make her way, oh, I, 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 you know, everybody talks about blessings and the blessings that fall and flow from God. And they're absolutely right. Uh, there, there are blessings that are divine that comes from God. But, but I, I need to tell you that most often, if not almost always, there are difficulties that have to be overcame before we get to the blessings that come from God. There's a difficulty, Brother Walt. She's not feeling well. Uh, there, there's a press of people. Uh, and not everybody's getting out of her way and making an inlet for her to get to Jesus. There are some difficulties. But when she realizes that the coming to Christ, even though it's difficult, the blessings that come uh, through the difficulty are going to be far greater than any difficulty she'll face. See, imagine, imagine this woman. Because of her condition, she smells. She's not the most pleasant person to be around. Her body smells because of the condition that she has. She's undesirable, but yet she persisted in spite of her condition. Some folks may say, I just can't get to Jesus because of my condition. Well, let me tell you, there must be some overcoming the difficulties and the transitions of getting to Jesus. Because if you want a blessing from God, you're going to have to go in spite of your current condition. You've got to press through. And then there was the crowd for the woman. They were press, pressing around him, but she was persistent and she got in contact with Jesus. Sometimes it's just not easy to get the presence of God. Sometimes it's not easy to get to, to the, the place where we can touch him. See, it wasn't just enough to hear about him or be cognizant of him. She had to get to the place where she, 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 she touched him. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But her condition, the crowd, third thing that I noticed about her was the contact with Christ. She had to touch His garment. There had to be contact with Christ if she was going to be healed. It wasn't just enough to hear about Him. It really wasn't even just enough to come and see Him. 
She had to get to the place where she came in contact with him. See, many folks hear about him. The world is full of people who hear about him. Oh, I know about Jesus. And there's a lot of folks that may say, I even see him. I see him. But it's a completely different ballgame. When someone says, I hear about him and I see him. But I'm getting into contact with him. Can I tell you, all the elements are here tonight. We've heard testimonies, we've heard encouraging words, we've sung, we've had wonderful music, all those things. I mean, we have heard about Jesus tonight in our service. And I can even say that we've probably seen him. I know we have. I've seen him pass by already this evening. I, I, I felt it. But it's another thing when we really get in contact with him about our needs and what we have need of. So tonight you can come and you can hear about him and you can even see if Jesus is passing by. I love that old, uh, old uh, uh, course uh, uh, we, we, we used to sing, uh, reach out and touch the Lord as, uh, as he passes by. Uh, it's one thing to know that he's here and to see him, but it's another thing to reach out and touch him and make contact with him. And that's where this woman is. She not only see, uh, hears about him, she's cognizant of him, uh, she comes to Christ, but she says it's not just enough for me to see him. She realizes I'm still sick, I'm still weak, but she reaches out and with faith she touches him and she comes in contact with him and her faith demonstrates uh, by the touching of his garment, amen, that she now is made whole. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. Church is about hearing about Him, yes. And it's about seeing Him. But this isn't just an audience that comes to be a spectator. Amen. God is looking for participators. Those who will reach out and touch Him. The Bible says, For she said, If I may touch His clothes, I will be whole. Talk about level of faith tonight. Just if I touch his clothes, he doesn't need to look at me eye to eye. He doesn't need to speak some words. He doesn't even need to touch me. But if I touch him, she said, I'll be home. The level of faith that is there. And straightway, the Bible says, what does that straightway mean? It means immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up as she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She knew she was healed when she touched him. What would it be like tonight not only to see him, but to touch him and to know that we made contact and he had answered our prayer? And Jesus immediately knowing in himself of that virtue or the power that had gone out of him. He turned about the press and he said, touch me. <laughs> you know what? The Spirit of God had revealed to him. He had felt in himself that someone reached out by faith and touched him. The disciples, they said, Jesus, there's a lot of people here. Father, you need who touched you? And he looked about and he saw the woman fearing and trembling. Knowing what was done in her, she came and she fell before him. And told him all the truth. Not only does she see healing, but now she's seeking mercy. Know the mercy of God. He grants it so free to those who seek it. And the Bible says that he said unto her daughter, Your faith has made you whole. See, Previously, in the Word of God, the Word of God, Sister God, refers to her as a certain woman. But now Jesus, Brother Dennis, says, Die. Something about mercy, Brother Dennis, being granted to this woman. Brother Justin grafted her into the family of God. And now he refers to her as Die. He said, Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. She not only gained healing, but she gained salvation that day. He said, and behold of your plague. 
Meaning that this would never, ever return to her. When God touches Elaine, and I believe He has touched you, don't you sit around and worry if this is going to return. Amen. He has made you whole. The plague is gone. The Bible says, and while we yet spoke, and I'm wrapping things up, but journey with me for a few moments. And while he yet spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, certain one which said, you die. She's dead. Trouble the master. I've not been around a lot of children that have died. But I'll never forget the ones that I have been around. Well, I don't have words to say to that parent. All I can use is just a presence. Begging God to raise that child from the dead. I mean, could you imagine? Once again, I don't even let my mind go to places like that. I love my girls. I will do anything for them. It's a, a crazy love for your children. Isn't it? But Jesus, thank God, before anxiety can even take over a parent's heart, to hear a word from God. Jesus said, be not afraid. Only believe. I'm talking to them about whatever our situation is. That anxiety may want to overtake us. The word of the hour may want to bring disappointment, fear. But God says, only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Listen to me tonight. What are the things that you need God to do in your life? I have a word from God for you tonight. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. The Bible says that when he came to the house of the ruler, he had not allowed anyone else to follow but Peter and James and John, the brother of James. He came to the house and he saw the tumult of uh, those who weeped and wailed greatly. I mean, really, let's face it. We don't expect children to die. It's not the way that it is in our mind. It seems like an injustice. It seems cruel. It seems unfair. And so the wailing, the weeping that's happening in the house. The Bible says that he came in and he said, Why do you make all this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleeps. Jesus wasn't referring to her not being dead. She was dead. Because the Word of God refers to death and sleep. And so he knew that she was dead, but he knew what he was going to do. The Bible says, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he got to leave. He took the father and the mother of the day and sold Peter, James, and John. He entered into the room, and he said, Damsel, I say unto you, arise. And the girl arose. I want to say something to you in closing tonight. Tonight. Have you heard about Jesus? We've shared them all service. You need to get so much information that you can go into the world and share it. You know why we share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because it's in our spiritual DNA. We are made up in such a way that that's what we talk about, that's what we think about, that's who we are, so we have to share Jesus. The world needs it. But tonight, we've heard about Him, and we've even seen Him. 
And I want to ask you this question. Have you made contact with God tonight? Have you made contact with Him? What are your needs? What are those things that you need tonight? It's not just about hearing and seeing, but it's about making contact. And then tonight it's about that no matter what we hear or what the circumstances are, we hear the voice of God say, but only, only believe. Sister Helen, you mind coming tonight? That's not the play. Tonight I just want to open these altars up. I've tried to intentionally be somewhat shorter tonight to give us more time to pray. I've tried to present the Word of God in such a way that I want you to know that throughout the service we've heard and we've seen God. But now it's your opportunity to make contact with God. Take the opportunity not to hear just from Brother Seville, from God Almighty. Only believe. What are the things that you're needing tonight? Only, only. I'm telling you, it's simple to me. A few months ago, I stood in the ICU with a man that was about to die. I didn't want to know all about his story. But I agreed with a family member and I said, do you believe they said, I do. I said, well, let's agree together in prayer. Brother Dennis, God changed that situation. And we witnessed a miracle. Only believe. There comes a point where we really have to make contact with God. Not just hearing about it. Not just say, but for herself, making contact. The woman with the issue of blood didn't allow her condition to hinder her, and she didn't allow God to hinder her. She made contact. Tonight, you have the same opportunity to make contact with God. Would you come and do that in the place of prayer this evening? Let's make contact with the Lord.